right, it's day 47. It's amazing to think that we've been out here for 47 days. Um, of course, that includes zeros. Well, day 47, we are leaving where we ended last night. I don't even remember the name of the road anymore. We're hiking to uh, some other road I don't remember the name of. I'll have to look it all up. But uh, we'll get the first seven miles or so to Iron Masters, where the general store is. What is it called? Hold on. All right, looked it up. How can I forget the name of the road? We're leaving Dead Woman's Hollow Road which turns into Forest Road here at the trailhead. And we're hiking. Our first stop is Pine Grove For Furnace, um, which is where Iron Master uh, Hotel is, supposedly some sort of AT museum, and the Pine Grove General Store. Pine Grove General Store is famous for the Half Gallon Challenge, which for two different reasons sounds like a bad idea. One reason, neither of us think the idea of eating a half gallon of ice cream is worth it. Um, and I doubt they have a half gallon of vegan ice cream for me. And I guess the third reason, the weather is going to suck. So we can't keep taking zeros. We need to get the miles in. Today is gonna to be thunderstorm day. We know that. We had a little bit of it last night. Um, Right now it's cold and windy, so we'll see how it goes. But it's supposed to predict rain a lot of the day and again, thunderstorms. So we're just gonna hike through it. Uh, we're gonna continue on to Pine Grove Road, which is uh, 16 miles, or I think 15 to 16 miles ahead. So it's gonna be a good, a good longer day uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I did buy, in, in regards to the half gallon challenge, I did buy a pint of ice cream, vegan ice cream at Walmart, just in case there's no vegan ice cream there and we want to at least celebrate the ritual, even if we don't do a half gallon. So the other uh, thing that's going to come up on the trail is the, uh, halfway mark so there's like a a solid physical halfway mark on the trail it's really not the halfway mark because the trail changes slightly every year so the actual location of halfway is just a little bit off from that but i mean it's symbolic so it's it's cool but for us of course since we're flip-floppers it's not the halfway mark so i think for us we've done at this point, 360 miles. So nothing to sneeze at, but definitely not halfway because halfway, of course, would be over a thousand miles and uh, we'll get there. So if it starts raining, obviously I'll quit. I won't video much, maybe a short video day. I always think that and then it ends up being longer. I do try to keep the video shorter. I mean, my goal would be like 10 to 12 minutes a day. Often it's closer to 20, you know, and uh, I, I, I try not to get, I try to get away from that. But the one thing that's helping as we go along is if I've already shown you a particular cool thing or a flower or discuss something that was on my mind, well, I'm not gonna do it again. Well, I hope anyways, unless I forget. So therefore, you know, you think I'd have less to show you unless I talk about going further. And, uh, oh, this is interesting. How can you get over this without tickling the nads? I don't know. I'm just gonna do that. All right. All right, we made it to the official halfway point of 2024 Appalachian Trail. There is another ceremonial halfway marker that we'll run into, 
but this is the actual halfway point. How cool. So today we're also doing more experimentation with my feet issues. Um, I have removed the aftermarket insoles. So yesterday we did 12.4 miles and my the end, my feet were throbbing with pain. So we'll try it without them. My theory was that it was the rocks that were doing it, but I don't think that's actually the case. But maybe the insoles were making it worse. I mean, I don't know. That's the whole point of trying out different ways of doing it and seeing what helps and what doesn't help. Just like I've been doing with my pack situation and my back pain. Definitely don't want to make this vlog about Chase's ailments. <laughs> so, uh, it's not, I mean, it's a noteworthy thing, but it's not like the focus of my day on the trail. I just thought I'd note what our experiment today is. Just prepared to embrace the suck. So, uh, that, you know, on the trail is probably an overused phrase, but it's true. If you don't, I mean, if you resist it, you're just gonna be more miserable. And um, if you take a zero every time the weather turns bad, it's going to be a long time to finish a trail, so you're going to have to get used to just dealing with it. Not just weather, other things on a trail too that can be difficult or uncomfortable. And that's part of the trail. So, hence embrace the suck. Which is, a, you know, a sort of a perspective that goes beyond the trail. Sometimes things happen that you don't control. And... Uh, well, we do control is our reaction to them, which I know is a bit trite and everybody kind of knows that, right? But it's a good reminder, maybe just for me, to like roll with it, make the best of it. And uh, yeah, we're making miles, that's the important thing. And uh, meeting cool people, seeing cool things, doing cool stuff. So beyond embracing the suck, you know, I, I I think you also get to this point where you do understand why people quit the trail. You know, we're 360 something miles in and uh, sometimes it's just a, what I call a slog. You know, it's a daily grind putting in the miles. It's not easy. Uh, so, you know, and I know that there's some people that go like, oh, you got a van, you got, you know, like, yeah. But that doesn't necessarily make the hiking that much easier. And you still have to walk this, all these miles. And the van actually adds complication. Like, I've met so many hikers who go like, I'll just hike till I'm tired and find a tent spot and stop. Well, we can't do that. We have to coordinate with the van, figure out where to meet. Sometimes we end up having to really push ourselves. Uh, speaking of which, speaking of suck, rocks. Um, yeah. But I, anyways, back to point. I think I can understand why, you know, the novelty of, of doing this wears off pretty quickly. <laughs> Maybe on my... Well, I don't know if we ever had the novelty because we started on such a bad weather day. But, you know, after you've been on the trail for a few weeks, you're kind of like, you settle into a bit of a routine and, you know, you, it's not like, woohoo, I'm on the Appalachian Trail. That kind of goes away. Um, and then you wonder, and, and it gets replaced by plodding along one foot in front of the other. And... Uh, yeah, and then you, then you think about, which you probably shouldn't, but you think about, like, in our case, we've got over 1,800 more miles of this. That's a lot, you know. We haven't even done one-sixth of the trail yet. So, it can be daunting to look to the future and think, I'm going to be doing this for five more months. I have no thoughts of stopping. 
just FYI. But I'm just saying I understand why people do. Yale's almost tropical right here. We're in a rainforest again. All right, we've reached Tom's Run Shelter. Great looking tent site. Those uh, rocks are used because you can't really drive a stake into that gravel, so you use the rocks to tie down the corners or guidelines of your tent. I have a covered painting table. And... All right, so who are you? My name is Carlo. And uh, Carlo, where are you from? From Louisville, Kentucky. And why the hell do you have an instrument on your pack? Uh, well, good question. I miss playing music, so I took the one pound weight disadvantage and been lugging around for the past three weeks. So. Cool. My daughter will actually enjoy seeing that. So, uh, what kind of pack are you using? This is a the Durston Kakwa 40. All right. And how's that working out for you? It's been great. I love it. It's simple and light and stick stuff in it and I go. Dan should sponsor me. <laughs> so, yeah, awesome. And uh, so, where'd you start? Uh, Amaclola State Park. I did the half of the stairs because they were right. Same. Uh, the construction, and then uh, yeah. So I've been on trail for about three months. Three months, and you're all the way up here, and so you should be done in a couple months. No, uh, month. shooting. I'm shooting for the second week in August because I'm plan is to meet my sister and her family. Yeah. Uh, on top of Katahdin. Oh, awesome. So we'll see if it works. All right, great. Well, thanks for talking to us. Yes. <laughs> That's not a very impressive bear hang, but... It's a little small. <laughs> Somebody left... There's a bladder and a tarp and I don't know what else. Yeah. So that's the bear hang? The wood? Yeah, I guess it is, huh? So the halfway point and other mile markers along the trail are part of what I look at on the the balance sheet of the positives and negatives of doing a flip flop because I'm sure those things would be much cooler if they applied to you, right? So if you had been hiking continuously from Springer Mountain, Georgia, hitting that halfway point would be epic. For us, it's like, oh, that's cool, but it's not our halfway point. So seeing the 1100 mile thing is like, it's not our 1100 mile. So anyways, it's a relatively minor point, but it's, uh, a minor downside of doing a flip-flop all the things that apply to a northbound and I guess that would be actually a downside for well the halfway point wouldn't be a downside but the mileage markers otherwise would be a downside for the uh, Sobo hikers also but yeah flip-floppers yes we'll have to have our own markers in our head I guess so again make sure it's not oh, making sure it's not not winding it's not a big deal it's just one of those things you have to think about just like how epic your finish is if it's not on top of Katahdin or through the arch at Amicalola um, yeah all right from the bottom we're looking up at the mansion that's a hostel of sorts uh, the Iron Masters mansion and uh, yeah All right, my version of the half gallon challenge. <laughs> That's why I don't eat much ice cream at home either. Mm. Well, it's good. You like sweet stuff. I 
All right, my half gallon's done. That's it. So we are nearing the end of this 16 plus mile day and uh, <laughs> the funny thing is is I actually thought about like maybe we should add on some more miles make this a 20 mile day. Um, I'm not sure that, that might, might be nice to just call it done at 16 but uh, mainly it reflects that I'm just thrilled that my feet have the normal amount of pain that makes sense they don't feel like super stabby as they did yesterday turns out that pain kind of slows you down and makes it hard to walk um, and also I think I've complained about my back and I'm still dealing with it it's uh, that between the shoulder blades pain um, but I've lessened it a lot today and obviously correlation does not equal causation so we can't be sure that this is the fix or what made a difference but I've been doing stretching exercises uh, occasionally as I walk I noted yesterday that by the time I finished hiking at 12.4 miles I, I really could hardly move my neck it was so stiff and so I've been doing neck exercises and it definitely feels connected to that so I stretch my neck to the side and rotate and do the kind of other things and it really seems like it's keeping my back from whatever it is that makes it feel like someone stuck a knife in the middle of my shoulder blades. So, yeah, it's nice to feel good again. It's been a while. So, I mean, I mean, especially towards the end of a hike, uh, I, I usually do feel good at the beginning. So it's uh, pretty cool. And as you might note, the sun is out, the rain has stopped, and uh, yeah, really, really digging that. So, yeah, we're gonna, I think I remember seeing this bridge as being one that was damaged and they didn't want you walking on it and that's the same one I'm thinking about. It looks like they've done a lot of work to it and uh, it's open with signs to be careful. So cool.